Huzzah! Welcome back to our next video. This one's going to be on prior solution attempts. Hopefully at this point you've realized that my wife has made me a nice list of welcoming messages. So we're going to try and use some of those. The best one on here I think is huzzah. Let's get started. So if you haven't already realized it or remember when we went over it, you can in our Gantt chart, our planning project timeline, Come over here to any of these hyperlinks and click on them to be able to get straight to those assignments. In this case, we're going to talk about prior solution attempts. Here's a quick, easy way to get to it. You simply click on that and it opens it up in a new tab. Things you know. Prior solution attempts. Let's go through the introduction real quick, and I mean real quick. As you attempt to validate your problem and justify your proposed project, your team will research solutions to your problem that already exist. Although your own research will ultimately be in your ENB, it is crucial to use all of your team's research when comparing similar solutions that solve problems similar to yours, or those that attempt to solve your problem but are not very successful. In other words, it's super important that as you move forward with your topic area, you try to find solutions that are already out there that solve the problem. You're already doing this. This assignment is all about you being able to document that in one place and be able to compare those solutions using a decision matrix, also known as a similar solution matrix. So much like a decision matrix, a similar solution matrix is used to help your team make decisions. The analysis of past and current attempts to solve the problem expands your knowledge base. It is important to consider the strengths and shortcomings of these solutions to balance past attempts with current problems. This can help in creating your own design and also prove that there still is a problem to be solved or addressed. Like always, you guys have plenty of resources to look at here. There's, of course, your engineering notebook where you'll be keeping a lot of your documentation, a computer or device with internet access, and a new link, prior solution attempts documents. Let's take a look at those for a second. So if you click on that link, it brings you to this page. There is an okay presentation. It looks like this. It's okay. There are some good things in here. I would encourage you to take a look at it. What you'll find is that after they talk to you about how to use the very complicated uh, decision matrix or similar solution matrix that they have here, or after they talk to you about searching patents, which you've already proven that you can do well, and walking you through how to download a TIFF viewer, and also talking to you about the very complicated way of searching on the old site. Yeah, it's a lot of the slides in here are about that. They do eventually get to these, where they talk to you about the fact that it's really a comparison assignment. Looking at the pros and cons, looking at the things that are good or bad about similar solutions or solutions that already exist. And once you get to the end of that, it's pretty much over. Look at it. There is some information in here that might be helpful. More so, what's going to be great about these documents is the similar solution matrix template. So you click on this link, it brings you to this. Okay, Mr. Davidson, what is this? This is the similar solution matrix template. You are more than welcome to use this you are also more than welcome to adapt it to your own uses. You should make a copy of this and then go forward from there. Make sure that your team has a copy of this if you're going to use it. Don't try to just alter this one. You'll notice that it has a place for sources, a place for you to put in what the solutions or designs look like and maybe a name for them, as well as the specifications provided for you, say in Amazon, or that you find through Google searches of these things. And then there is a place for you to put your criteria across the top, whatever they may be. I've provided two for you here, cost and durability or accessibility for the ones that we were looking at. I gave a breakdown of how those could be assessed, one through five, or a yes, no. You can see that we even have a place that you could put in added information about those particular criteria. This section of it, on the right hand side is all about a place to provide your team quick access to being able to rank these solutions. If you look close enough, you'll find that there's already formulas in these cells 
to help find the average or calculate the average and then add them up on the far right hand side. This entire first row of information is all just an example. Feel free to replace it as you see fit. And then of course if we come back to the similar solution documents we find that there's a link to patents and intellectual property. That brings us to this tab to which there is, well, if you remember from your patents what are they discussion, a lot of information here and this was the link that you should have used. However, this patent summary sheet is what I'm going to encourage you to use when you're doing searches for the patents that go along with your similar solution matrix to help you understand the information about the products that you're searching. Of course, all of this will wind up also being in, at minimum, your engineering notebook. Let's talk about the procedure. It's a very short procedure, not a whole lot to this. Three major steps. Here's the beginning. In the prior solution attempts documents, you will find a presentation that might help, but more importantly, there is the template that I've provided that can aid your team in creating a similar solution matrix. Remember, that first row, you can delete it. Replace it with your information as needed. At the end of this assignment, you need to have a similar solution matrix available for me to be able to look at. So however it is you're going to submit it to me through the turning in of this assignment, make sure it's accessible make sure I can look at it. So you're going to submit this when turning in the assignment, whatever that similar solution matrix is that you decide to go with. Keep in mind, it doesn't need to be completely filled out, though it's probably best to do this concurrently or as early as possible with all of the other assignments that you're working on at the moment. Split yourselves up. Have it started. Find someone in your team who's willing to start this particular assignment and get it in place as early as you can. The framework should be set up and how your team will use it should be understood and agreed upon by all of your teammates by that due date. Keep in mind, this is going to continue past the actual due date as you will work things out. Your similar solution matrix must be filled out completely by the time the same due date for your project proposal rolls around. So when you go to turn in that project proposal, this similar solution matrix better be part of it and it better be filled out, better be completed. When you have your due date for the similar solution matrix, in the middle of the time that you have to work on this assignment, I want to see that you've got it set up, that it's in place, that you have the ideas going forward. You maybe don't have it completely filled out on the matrix side, but you've been picking your similar solutions. You have the data that you need to put into specifications, some pictures of them, the sources of where you found them. How many of them you have is up to you. I would encourage two to three per teammate but at minimum one per teammate. The more you have, the better. You're gonna follow this procedure. One, each team is responsible for researching prior solutions and tracking down patents for the solutions or important components of these solutions that set them apart from other solutions. Find the ones that make the most sense. Find the ones that are Solving your problem either poorly or something very similar to your topic area problem. There is a link to the patent and intellectual property information in those prior solution attempts documents. Don't forget to utilize that to the best of your ability. And of course, patent information should be recorded as part of this assignment and other assignments concurrently being completed right now. And in some cases, assignments that you've already completed. All research should be collected using the patent summary sheet or any other means your team finds useful. But in the end, it should be included in your ENBs. Number two, using either the provided similar solution matrix or one that your team digitally creates or simply what you've recorded in that ENB, if you don't do it digitally, record the best solutions that attempt to solve your team's problem or that solve it poorly of those things that already are out there on the market. In other words, fill out the similar solutions matrix. Make sure you have important information in place by that due date. You should be sure on whatever matrix you use, whether it's the template I provide or something you make or that your team is putting into engineering notebooks, 
the following information a source for the solution so it can be verified at least one image of your solution if not two there's a couple of places you can put them a description and or specifications about the solution that you found and also a matrix comprised of either teammates names or the solution names or maybe numbers you've provided for them like one through five the criteria that you find to be most important and a ranking system along with an explanation of that ranking system like five is best one is worst two is yes one is no or whatever and then of course the totals at the end so that we can see what did total the highest value or if necessary the lowest value that doesn't mean that's the one that you think is the best solution it just simply means it's the one that scored the highest you might have reasoning as to why it's not the quote unquote best you're just looking at the comparison of them all with using the similar solution matrix, you should be able to determine the following things. One, how your team is actually going to utilize this matrix, what it means for you as far as component one, the criteria necessary to understand, ah, it's underlined, must be important, to understand the best prior solution and then to be able to compare all of them together. The results of your team's similar solution matrix and you need to determine what they mean for your team's current solution. Let me state that again. You need to determine the results of your team's similar solution matrix and what those results mean for your team's current solution that you're hypothesizing at the moment. Should a solution that you're trying to figure out be based on one of these similar solutions? Should it avoid certain pitfalls or mistakes that these other solutions have? Or perhaps pitfalls and mistakes that you stumble across that these solutions solved? Should it solve additional problems? Are there additional problems? Hmm. Your topic area is one problem, but maybe there's others out there. And then, of course, anything else that you think you need to determine from this. This is an open-ended project, after all. Number three, in the final part, you're going to use this collected up information in the matrix to help validate and justify your solution during your project proposal. And that's it. Keep this document. Make sure it's ready to go when it's time to turn it in. I hope this helped a little bit. Let me know. Have a great night.